couple of like that. So the texture might look a little different than normal because I'm working on textiles right now. So this is actually a, uh, it's a, it's a cotton t-shirt. What I'm doing is I'm um, I'm starting to make stock for Coachella. It'll be three years when we get out there, and we've been waiting a long time. It's kind of where we make our money. So we've gone three years with no income. We didn't get any of that unemployment or... I don't even think I got any of those checks. Because if you're self-employed, you didn't get that. And really, I don't want it. Because now they're going back and... hassling people about it. Especially self-employed people. Can you prove it? All that crap and fines and all that so I don't want to be not, I don't want any part of that so so anyways uh, April we'll be back out of Coachella I got my booth out there my partner Gary Tovar come visit us at uh, Tovar and Otis when we're out there so I like to make as much of this hand-painted stuff. Oh, look at that. That's going to be a black eye right there, baby. So, um, can I save it? Yeah, I will save it. I guarantee you that. So, um, we will be selling all kinds of cool stuff. And I really like it because you can do a lot of handmade cool one-of-a-kind things. I'm going to heat up this thing for a second, so give me a moment. Uh, sorry about that. I don't want the ink to spread anymore. So what I'm using is a... Uh, I'm using these... The, can you see these? These Maltos. And they're uh, acrylic-based pump pens, but as you can see, what just happened, sometimes you'll get a little blob. So you better be ready to work with it. And now I put an additive in. A textile additive. So when I finish these, they'll, uh, they'll go through my conveyor dryer. And it cures them. They'll hand dry and field dry, but um, the additive I put in makes them... Um, stay more permanent. Now I would think we sell these out there and they go for a little more than a screen printed shirt. Um, and you would think people would want to maybe dry clean them or something. But, but there's a lot of people that uh, they just don't mind spending a little bit, bit more money for something cool and they wear it just like anything else. Look at people that buy, friends that buy vintage pottery and plates and they use it just like their regular stuff. So I, I actually do the same thing. But I don't, I always try to find that stuff. You know, thrift stores and deals. So I'll put another one right in here. 
see if I can not get a blob going on. Put a little dude in here. So if you if you have not subscribed to my channel, just do it. Click that little subscribe symbol there. Because it makes people uh more people will see the video. And I'm just really kind of getting started with this. Um, I think I'm going to start filming for Coachella, though, the preparation, how we do our printing and make our screens. I'm thinking I'll do a video all the way from beginning to finished product. And I've always been an advocate of doing stuff for nothing because I've always done everything for hardly anything. You don't have to have a ton of equipment. You don't have to buy a bunch of expensive stuff. You can make most of your own stuff. I could probably say I have printed hundreds of thousands of t-shirts on homemade equipment that didn't cost me probably more than a hundred bucks. Of course, I bought more stuff as I got into it more, but uh, but actually as time has gone on, I have gotten rid of that stuff. And I'm back to square one, kind of just doing, um, I only want to do handmade stuff now. You know, that's what's fun to me. If I could do this kind of stuff all day, it'd be great, but it's just too hard to to do the quantities for what we do at the festivals, you know, so. But I'll be out there doing it in the booth as we're working. Um, I think he needs a third eye. So textiles act a lot different than paper. But these pens are cool. Once I put my additive in, they uh, they don't bleed. And I'll add color when we're done. So, see, I don't like printing a ton of colors on a t-shirt screen printing anymore. I used to do it, but now I would rather hand color. And I've always hand colored when I had my stores and all that. We did our own custom shirts just for our stores, but uh, it's just cooler and you get something unique, you know, if it's handmade. I think we need something else, maybe, maybe he loves him, huh? to prove love yeah so subscribe if you can because other people will check us out so I'm also gonna have a bunch of handmade hats see I don't know if I want to put a whole bunch of stuff on here sometimes it's cool just to have tiny bit of imagery, you know, and not a big obnoxious shirt. In the 80s, we did obnoxious a lot. I wanted to be known as having the giantish prints because the t-shirt presses don't handle the palettes that you put the shirts on to have big giant shirt prints. So we would make our own. People don't want giant prints like they did in the 80s, in the 90s, a little bit in the 90s, but started getting. So I did a shirt, and only a handful of people got them. And I went the opposite direction. 
I did the smallest print in the world. It's a little teeny tiny skull on a shirt. A couple people bought them. Yeah, so I think I'll do a video beginning to end on how you can set up print screen print shirts with very little money. From the art to the film that you need to make the screens to making the screens to developing and burning your screens to printing and how you can do it. And you can get started that way if you ever wanted to get into screen printing and um, get started for nothing and as you get orders and make stuff you can buy more equipment you know more pro equipment and that's how we did it originally but like I said, you don't need it. Screen printing is designed as a primitive form of printing. So now the people ta have taken it to all these weird levels to where it's mimicking litho printing. It's like, well, that's, you're missing the point of it. That's not what it's supposed to be. You know, it was originally just stencils and things like that. You know, they you could make your T-shirt out of a paper stencil or your your art out of a little paper stencil and just stick it on the screen and that would block the ink and there you were you had a screen print you could probably do a few hundred shirts that way it's kind of cool so when I do that video I'll show you how you can do it for nothing I never people buy these big expensive light systems to burn their screens we used to just cover them up and run out and hold them up to the sun. And I could get little teeny half-tone dots, just like the expensive equipment once you figure out what to do. Of course, we'd screw them up and have to redo them. Now I've got, I've got ancient arc lights in the back that are really cool, carbon arc. And... uh They'll give you cancer. You can't even get the parts for them anymore. I still got a bunch of parts, though. That's how they used to do all the movie lighting back in the day. Carbon arc was actually like an arc welder that made the light. And that's what you, how you'd make your screens. So see, I got a handful of little skulls here now. And I think I'll keep it at that. And hey, it's... Bigfoot's birthday tomorrow, or is it already? I think it is already, so uh, happy holidays, and we'll see you next time. I'll be doing a whole bunch more work as we get closer to Coachella. It'll go crazy, and I'll try to c cut cut you guys in and on as much of it as I do as we go. Okay, I'm gone. See ya.